In this video tutorial, we will look at how we can do real-time object tracking using YOLO V10 and Deep Sort algorithm. YOLO V10 is a state-of-the-art object detection algorithm, while Deep Sort is an object tracking algorithm. So we will be integrating YOLO V10 and Deep Sort so that we can do object detection and tracking using YOLO V10 and Deep Sort. So let's get started with it. So in the first step, I will present a demo of all the things will work, and then we will start writing down the code. So here is the demo of the application. Like you can see over here, we have assigned a unique ID to each of the detected object. Like for this person, unique ID 14 is assigned. With this person, a unique ID 11 is assigned. And with this person, unique ID 6 is assigned. With this person, the unique ID 22 is assigned. And with this person, the unique ID 25. With this person, 3. And for this bicycle, uh, the unique ID 10 is assigned. And for this portrait plant, you can see the unique ID 21 is assigned. And here you can see the frame count. It's continuously increasing. And over here, we can see the FPS, it's very low, it's zero because I am running it on CPU. If you done it on GPU, you will be getting a good FPS score. So now you can see that each of the detected object is being assigned a unique ID, like 21, 22, 25, 11, 6, 3, 10. And this ID will, uh, will be remain with those objects, like the unique ID which we have assigned using object tracking will remain with these objects, whether it is a person, bicycle, or pot potted plant, until these objects remain in the frame of the video. When the object uh, leaves the frame and come back again, a new ID will be assigned. So until the object remains in the frame, that ID will be assigned to that object. Like you can see over here, until these objects are in the frame, they will retain these IDs like 25, 22, 3, 10. And you can see a green circle in the middle. So this is basically, uh, we have drawn a circle at the center coordinate of these bounding boxes. Like you can see over here, so it is nothing new, just a circle that is drawn around the center coordinate of the bounding box. So now you can see that this person and bicycle are leaving the frame. So until the, the person and bicycle are in the frame, they have retained the ID 3 and 10. So in object tracking, what we do is we basically assign a unique ID to each of the uh, object. So this is what is object tracking. In object tracking, we basically assign a unique ID to each of the detected object and they will keep this ID until these objects are in the frame of the video. So you can uh, also test it on the live webcam feed. You can also do object tracking on an image or on a video. So currently we will be doing object tra tracking on video. And uh, first in the first step, we will be doing object detection on video. So you can also test it on the live webcam feed. It will give the same results. I have also tested on live webcam feed and the results are quite good. So now you can see the bench is here detected as well and the unique ID 39 is signed. And now you can see this person and bicycle are leaving and uh, 3 and 10. So these are the unique IDs they have retained throughout the frame. And now this person is entering and you can see they have a unique ID 24 over here. Okay, so this is how things work and let's start writing down the code. So now you can see over here, I've just created a project in the PyCharm committee addiction. So first of all, in the step number one, I will just clone the Yolo V10 GitHub repo over here. So you can just go over here and let's clone this GitHub repo over here. So I will just open the terminal and I will just write over here, here, clone and just add this link. So now we'll, we are just cloning this Yolo V10 GitHub repo over here. So this will take few seconds. I'll get what it's done. Okay, so it's done. So if I just uh, reload it from this, Now you can see Yolo V10 folder over here. So we will set this Yolo V10 as our current directory over here. Okay, so now in the step number one, you will install all the required packages. So if you just open the requirement.txt file, you will find all the packages that are required to do object detection in your using Yolo V10. And uh, when we do object tracking, we will install some other packages as well, like easy dick and this require object tracking requires NumPy version less than 1.24. So we'll uh, instead do it later on. Currently, we are only focusing on object detection. So install all these packages. Okay. So I'm just installing installing all the packages that are mentioned in the requirements.txt file. Okay. So this will take some time for all these packages to get installed. So let's wait. So I mean, the meanwhile, the this package is gets installed. So I have the resources folder. So I just paste it over here. Okay. So in that resources folder, I have some images and videos that I will be using 
uh, to test object detection, object tracking model. So now you can see we have these four images over here. Okay, and we have the four videos over here as well. So including object detection and object tracking videos and images. Uh, further, we require the yellow V10 model weights as well. So you can simply go over here and by clicking on this, you will be able to download the model weights as well. So uh, what I will do is uh, you can simply click on here and a new directory uh, by the name weights and you can add the model over here. So I just do one thing. I have just pasted over here. These are the yellow V10 model weights that we required. Okay. So if you have a good GPO, uh, you can test your own uh, uh, other Yolo V10 models, like which give better performance. Okay. So, so now you can see this package installation will take some time. So as it gets completed, uh, uh, we will start writing down the code. So for here, uh, before we just need to create a dot .py file, first we will see how we can do object detection dot .py. So for this, we will create a new dot .py file. So let's wait for these packages to get installed and then we'll start writing down the code. Now you can see all the packages are installed. So now we'll start writing down the code. First, we will import OpenCV Python library. TV2. Let's add import on the required libraries. Okay. Uh, then we'll require code map and then I uh, will just write from ultra lead. Takes in for your law. Okay. So that's the word. So next, uh, we create a video capture object. So you just write CV2 dot video capture. Okay. Then I will just go inside the resources folder. And over there, we have this uh, video. A video folder. Let's test it on this video. Okay. Oh, so now I will decide while to that form of frame is equal to cap dot read. Okay. And we read. Okay. See we do dot short our word frame and it's pv2 dot v8 key one and a order one then the grip ray else when the user press the one key the output window will stop disappear and the skip will stop running and the delay of we have added a delay of one millisecond between the projective frames. Okay. Okay, so now if you want to get rid of the FPS, you can just write the time, uh, FPS stand for frame per second and run time is equal to zero. And for FPS, we just write uh, run time is equal to time dot time over here. And over here, I will just write in time. Okay. That's the word, and over here I will just write FB equal to one, but by and time minus previous time. Yeah. And previous time is equal to current time. And I will just use CV2 dot put text function over here. Uh, before I just do this, uh, we can also do the frame count as well. So for this, uh, I will just write. Over here, found that one, and over here, I will just write frame bound. Okay, so that's the word. Okay, and here we will just write seeing it without text. And the input will frame, okay. The question will be 1050. 
ओके दैट्स द वर्ल्ड द फोन स्केल विल बी थ्री द कलर ऑफ द टेक्स विल बी ब्लू एंड दस विल बी थ्री ओके सो वी विल आई विल कॉपी दिस अप एंड विल डू सिमिलर फोर द फ्रेम काउंट एल्स आई विल ओनली चेंज द कलर या वी हैव द मेरी काउंट Okay, so here we have hundred, okay, and looks good everything. Okay, so we have now a few frame bound and everything looks good. Uh, so only let's run this up and see if everything is working smoothly. Then we will do object detection using Yolo V10 in the next step. So this will take two seconds before we start running. So now you can see over here, uh, like you can see, we are just getting a very high FPS and the frame count is as well. So things look good. Okay, we can just use video three. This is a very long video as well. Okay, so now I will just initialize the Yolo V10 model over here, and we have the model. Let's find out your small and maternal yellow with ten dot pt. Okay. So okay. Plus, uh, we need to add to find the Coco class names. Uh, like our pre yellow with ten pre-trained model is been trained on the Coco data set and it has eighty different classes. So I've just added over here. Okay. You can just write results in equal to model dot predict and. Uh, we have the frame confidence score as 0.25. So all the reductions uh, which have a confidence score above 0.25 will be drawing bounding boxes around those reductions. So now we'll loop through these results. Okay. okay. So for box in boxes open okay so basically we are just looping through all the warning boxes and from here we get the output in the form of tensors and we are just converting those tensors into integers over here. Okay. And I will just write over here C rectangle. Uh, X group. And the um, color of the rectangle or the bounding box will be blue and the thickness will be 3. Okay, so next we need to calculate the confidence score. So we will just write box dot confidence 0. Okay. Uh, next we need to calculate the class IDs. Like uh, for the person, the class ID will be 0. For the bicycle, the class ID will be 1. So next, let's compute the class names. So next, we will just calculate the. Uh, next, what we will do is, we will just add a uh, class name and confidence right here. Okay. Next, calculate a text size. So we'll just add cv2 dot get text. Size level font scale is equal to zero point five. Thickness is equal to two. So now, now we are just get rid of the coordinates because we need to draw a bounding box above. One bounding box will be drawn above the detected object as well. Okay, so. Uh, it's one minus three. Okay, so 
Next, what we'll do is we'll just write CD2 dot rectangle. Okay, currently I'm just drawing bounding boxes in for all the objects in blue color. Uh, when we do object tracking, we'll, then we'll assign a different color to each of the object. Okay. okay. That's what pretty good. Now we just need to put text inside the bounding box. So we just write frame label. The coordinates where we want to put the text. The font scale. The color of the text will be white. So we have the degree value white at 25. The thickness of the text will be 1. And line type will be even. Okay, so this looks pretty good now. So let's run this up now. Let's see if there is an error. We will definitely fix this up, but let's see how does it goes. Okay, there is no file. You have to read and let's run this again. So this will take few seconds before you start executing. Okay, so now here you can see we have the output over here. We have the FPS which is very low because, okay, but there are issues. Let's fix this up. Okay, there should be. Okay, I want this rectangle to clear. So there will be minus one. Okay, now I think uh, everything will be working smoothly, but let's execute this. Okay, so now you can see it's quite smooth now. Okay, so now you can see that here we have the FPS around 1 to 2, which is very low because uh, we are running it on CPU machine. If you have a good GPU and VDRT, it's under, uh, you will be getting around FPS around uh, 10 to 15, in between 10 to 15, like 11, 12. And where you can see we have the frame bound, it's continuously increasing. Uh, FPS basically stands for frame per second, and you can see over here we are able to detect the person. Uh, bicycle, person, person, what it learned, okay, person, person. So now you can see that we are able to do object detection using Yolo V10. Uh, and the results are quite good. Like we are able to like the persons, what it learned, person, bicycle. So let's move towards the object tracking part now. You can definitely test this on other videos and see what results do you get. Okay, so we will be doing object tracking using deep sort. So to do object tracking using deep sort, we require the deep sort files. So I will add those deep sort files into this Yolo V10 folder. I will also share these deep sort files with you. So let's go ahead and start writing the script for object tracking. So let's get started. Now we will see how we can do object tracking using deep sort. So we have seen that how we can do object detection using Yolo V10. So here I will just create another folder by the name of object tracking file or a new dot by file app created and I will just add all the code all the code from here and I will just add it over here. Okay, so that's in the code now. So first of all I will just create some empty list over here. Okay, and then over here we'll just contents and uh, to add all the unique IDs uh, we'll just create another list over here save our output here so I've just created four empty list over here and now what I will do over here is I will just uh, remove all this port for now okay so first of all we'll get rid the Enter coordinates of the bounding boxes. Okay, so we'll just write CX, comma CY and X1 plus X2 
uh, divided by two and then play uh, enter y coordinates. You will just write y1 plus y2 uh, divided by okay. So here we are just calculating the center coordinates of the bounding box. Then we need to find the height and width of the coordinate. So we will just write box apps value so that we don't have any negative value. Then we have bounding box height. This will be absolute y one. Right. Okay. So now we'll save the center coordinates and the bounding box width and the height for all the objects that are detected in one frame in a frame uh, in two of if. And write CX so much CY. Bounding box. Where? Bounding box. I. So next, we will be get rid of the confidence score. I've already get rid of it previously. So can just simply write. Okay. So now we will uh, save all the confidence score values uh, for all the objects that are detected in a frame into a list. Which we have defined about. Similarly, we will also uh, save that class IDs. Like for the person, the uh, for the person is detected, that class ID will be zero. If the bicycle is detected, the class ID will be one. As you can see over here. Oh, so, you can see the right. So next, we need to also import a library name as import torch. Okay. So So basically this one contains us the center coordinates uh, with and the height of the bounding boxes. So now it's right charge tensor Okay, I just forgot to save this, so we can simply write over here. Confidence in it will charge dot answer. Okay, so we are good for now. Next, what we need to do is uh, we'll just go over right here and we just need to create a new directory over here. And inside this directory, we will just create another dot file. One, two, three, six. Okay. So over here, we will first import all the required libraries. So I will just add those all those libraries over here instead of uh, writing down one by one. Okay, so now next we'll create a class by the name object directory over here. Okay. So 
much clear the visualization. So over here we'll define the colors over here. And the or random down. Size we'll define over here. Popo class names. Okay, so that's so good. Next, we will. What we can do further is. We can just create a function. Initialize the plot. And here I will just. Create deep sort configuration object and load sightings from the YML file. Okay, so that's done. So next, what we'll do over here is. We'll just create another function. But before we do this, I will just go over here and I will just write from mutant store object tracking import object tracking. Okay. And then over here, I will just write object tracking in object tracking. Okay. And uh, here I will just write deep sort to object tracking dot initialize deep sort. Okay, so first we will be using this initialize deep sort function. Uh, so let's write down over here as well. Outputs is equal to deep sort dot update. Over here we will pass on this. Confidence. Uh, okay. The class ID and the current frame. So if we have a length of the outputs greater than zero, if the length of the outputs is greater than zero, then we will just uh, Calculate the bounding box coordinates from the output that we get from here. So if you just print out the output, uh, you can see that uh, the first four indexes contain the sub bounding box coordinates, uh, the second last contain the unique IDs. And the last one will contain the class IDs. Okay. So, so far so good. And let's start down the remaining code over here. So, so now we just need to draw the bonding boxes, add unique IDs and else. So we'll just try to create another function, draw the boxes. And the input will explain bonding box coordinates, the unique IDs. The class ID.
So now we'll just loop through the bounding box coordinates and draw bounding boxes around each of the directed object. Okay. So I've already written down all this code. So I will just add this code over here instead of writing down this again and again. Okay. So now you can see that we are just drawing uh, the bounding boxes and we are just creating, creating uh, here we are just calculating a center coordinates and drawing a circle at the center. And else I will also already explain when we were doing object detection in the previous part. Okay. So like here we are just drawing rectangle, adding text, all this stuff. Okay. So now we'll just call this function over here. And we will pass the frame, the bounding box, coordinates. the unique ID and over here we are also pass down the we will say the class ID okay so let's test this up and see what results should we get on this I will just click on it here so now this will take few seconds before it starts Okay, so now I think we need to draw on in the tick. A plus Okay, so also it will also usually give error with numpy greater than one point two four, so we'll have numpy less than one point two four installed now. So this will take few more seconds as well. So this will take some time. Uh, let's see how does it goes. So this is saving progress. Yes, it's done now. So let's run our script and see. What results do we get? Oh, I'm just running it now. So this will take few seconds and let's see what results do we get. Or if there is any error, we'll try to fix this up. So now you can see it has started. Now you can see the here we have detected a person and the unique ID 11 is assigned. Here we have also detected a person 6. And over here we have also detected a person. The unique ID 3 is assigned. Here we have detected bicycle. The unique ID 10 is assigned. Here we have detected a person. The unique ID 20. Here we have detected a potted plant. The unique ID 21 is assigned. So now you can see each of the detected object is being assigned a unique ID. And until this object remains in the frame of the video, they will keep this ID. And when the object disappears, that ID uh, will be uh, the, we will not be able to detect the person, so that ID will be removed. And if the person comes again in the frame, it will be, will be assigned a new ID. So until the object remains in the frame, they will retain this ID. Like you can see over here, 16, 6, 3, 10, 22, 20, 21. So these are IDs are being assigned to them at the start, and currently still they have been the the same ID. And until these objects remain in the frame, they will be keeping this same ID. 16, 6, 3, 10, 22, 25, 21. And here you can see the frame count. The FPS is zero. Uh, the FPS is very low. Like frame per how many uh, frames are processed per second? The FPS tell us. So if you are running it on a GPU machine, you will be getting around 10 to 15 uh, FPS. But I'm running on CPU. So you can see the processing is very slow and FPS is very low as well. So now you can see that 3, 10, 25, 22, 21. All of them have the same ID, like 14 for this person as well, 16, 6, 
for this person and results are quite good. So now in this video tutorial, we have seen that how we can do object tracking using Yolo V10 and DeepSort. You can test it on other videos as well. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.